Hello there, Drew Anish of Whiskey Lore, and time for another whiskey tasting. The other day I did a rye whiskey with Old Forester. Today I am going to be doing a wheat whiskey. And this is truly a wheat whiskey because it is 95% wheat, 5% malted barley. And it is a whiskey that I got back when I did my interview with Andy Ferris of the J.K. Williams Distillery in Peoria, Illinois, and uh, thanks to Matt Carter for uh, bringing my attention back around to that interview that I did. That's really where I started digging into the history of the Whiskey Trust and uh, Whiskey Lore Stories. I did a series on the Whiskey Trust talking about the Peoria end of it and really diving deep into the history of that organization and how it evolved and its impact on the, in the industry the myths around the idea that the Whiskey Trust actually had 95% of the whiskey industry under its control in the United States. That wasn't necessarily true, and it wasn't necessarily true that they were actually making whiskey at the Whiskey Trust. The Whiskey Trust was interested in basically doctoring neutral grain spirits and making you think that you were buying regular whiskey when in reality you were buying something was not quite as good. And what's interesting is that Kentucky held out for a long time on the Whiskey Trust. And now I'm in doing some research for a Kentucky brand about the Whiskey Trust in Kentucky because after 1899, they did get into Kentucky and in fact dominated the entire industry all the way up to Prohibition. So it's a fascinating story, but not a lot of people know that Peoria, Illinois, was once the home of whiskey in the United States. And so J.K. Williams is back trying to get that story out. And J.K. Williams, from my understanding, he was never really a regular distiller. He was somebody who was distilling during Prohibition illegally. And so, um, anyway... Very interesting story. It'd be interesting to dig in and find out more about him, but he's going to be a hard one to research if he wasn't legit in terms of, uh, you know, I mean, we say not legit because he was distilling during a time when it was illegal to be doing distilling. But anyway, American whiskey, uh, wheat whiskey, and if you've never had a wheat whiskey before, Bernheim is one. Um... Gosh, there's another one out west, and it is, whew, this is leaving me right now. But uh, anyway, so this is not a weeded bourbon. Weeded bourbons would be at least 51% corn with a high wheat content in them. Those would be your maker's marks and those types of whiskeys. But anyway, if you want to hear my interview with, um, with Andy Ferris, you can go check that out. I have it here on YouTube, so you can find it on the channel. It's about a year and a half old, I think. Uh, or you can find it on Whiskey Lore, the interviews, the podcast. So this comes with, uh, and this is really the only wheat whiskey I've ever done a review on up to this point. 47% ABV. An issue with wheat whiskey is usually that it requires a decent amount of time in a barrel because wheat on its own doesn't tend to usually give a lot of flavor. I get a little bit of vanilla from the barrel. I'm probably getting more herbal characters out of this and also I have a hard time putting my finger on it, but I think it's got a leather note. Just a little bit. It's a very light nose. Cheers. Mmm. I have a toasted toffee note. Where does it go from there? Toffee's there. Maybe a little cinnamon, just a hint. There's some heat to it. It's got a nice mouthfeel to it. Finishes off 
sort of dry, real honey, a bit of honey note coming in at the end. It's the same experience I was having last night. Not a lot, kind of a, a toasted caramel kind of note that rides through that's very nice, but isn't enough to sell me on wanting to sip this or buy another bottle of it. Well, I actually didn't buy this bottle. This was a sample sent to me. I don't know. Gosh, you know, I hate to say waste that mouthfeel. There's a little apple note in there also, I think. I hate to say, you know, because as a mixer, I don't know that this is necessarily going to do much to a cocktail other than provide alcohol. It's got a nice mouthfeel. I don't want to give up the mouthfeel. I would like to sip it. I could sip it mindlessly and not really think much about it. I'm just, I'm trying to think what the purpose would be for this particular whiskey. There's nothing really wrong with it other than it doesn't necessarily excite me in any particular way, unless I like that little toasted caramel note that's coming through there, which is nice, but uh, I don't know, it's tough. It's tough. Sometimes there are whiskeys that I just go, I don't know what I would use that for. And maybe there is a cocktail that that particular flavor will work out well. I'm interested, I'm finding it interesting that there's not really a cherry note in there. Usually with wheat whiskeys, I pick up a cherry note and I would think with a fully weeded one, I would get that. Mm. I don't know. Definitely wouldn't turn it down if somebody handed it to me, but I just don't know exactly what it is that would excite me about it. It's just, um, it is just a whiskey. And, um, it's going to be interesting to see over time if I get sold on wheat whiskey by any particular brand, because at this point, my opinion on wheat whiskey is that, eh, you know, rye has a lot of stuff going on in it, and I tend to like rye whiskeys or high rye whiskeys over high wheat whiskeys, so we'll see. But anyway, what do you think? Have you had a wheat whiskey that you really, really like that you think maybe I should give a try Two, to maybe change my opinion on wheat whiskey. Uh, be really interesting to know. Hope you enjoyed this video and, of course, more on the way in the future. And like and subscribe if you wish. And until next time, cheers and slan java. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice toasted note, but I'm just not sure... Hmm. Okay.